Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 10.4 Infinite Geometric Series. And you ask yourself, what is an infinite geometric series? Well, it is a geometric series with an infinite number of solutions. Infinite meaning that it goes on and on forever. Now we have two different types of those series. The first type is a convergent series. A convergent series is an infinite series with a sum. So all those numbers add up to a number. And how do we know? Well, here we have the absolute value of r. This is an absolute value of r, so it's always going to be positive, is less than 1. Well, where does that r come from? It comes from right here and then you ask where does this come from well you have to stay tuned to find out where this comes from and then our next series is a divergent series where we have an infinite geometric series that does not have a sum and how do we know this is that if the r is bigger than or equal to one if it's equal to one it is divergent so now we're asked to determine whether each infinite geometric series is convergent or divergent. Well, we have to figure out if r is bigger than or less than 1. And how do we find our r in a geometric se series? We go backwards, correct? So we have to take this 243 and divide it by 729. So we have 243, we divide it by 729 that gives us 0.3 repeating or one third and so the absolute value of one third is less than one so that means we have a convergent series next same thing here we're given our series how do we find our r we go backwards and divide so we go five divided by two that gives me 2.5 the absolute value of 2.5 is bigger than or equal to, it's really bigger than 1, and so that gives us a divergent series. Now we have the sum of an infinite geometric series can be found using this. If you look at the first slide, notice where this comes from. It is the infinite geometric series, and now r has to be less than 1, because if r is not less than 1, the series has no sum. So let's try some. Find the sum of each ge infinite geometric series, if it exists. So let's see what happens here. First thing we have to do is find our r, because we know that the first term is going to be a sub 1, and that's going to be negative 4 thirds. Now how do we find our, our r? We have to go 4 divided by a negative 4 thirds. That gives us a negative 3. Well, we have the absolute value of negative 3 is going to be a 3, right? And is 3 greater than 1? Yes, it is. And so since it's greater than 1, do we have a sum? We do not have a sum. So then we say no sum exists. Next one. What is our first term? We have a sub 1. That's going to be 4. How do we find our r? We just take negative 2. To find our r, we take negative 2, divide that by 4. We divide that by 4, we get a negative 1 half. Yes, it's negative, but remember we are taking the absolute value of that negative 1 half. Is that less than 1? Yes, it is. So r, r is negative 1 half. So now we use this r to put in for this formula. We took the absolute value of it to see if it had a sum. So now we're plugging this r into the formula. And we have 4 over, from my first term, 4, over 1 minus a negative 1 half. So that gives me 4 over 3 halves, which gives me a positive 8 thirds. So our sum is a positive 8 thirds. With 5, we go back to your favorite summation. Now we're starting at the first term and going up to infinities. This little sideways 8 
tells us that we are going to infinity. And now we are given our sequence for our series. The first couple things we have to find here is our a sub 1 and our r. Well, how can we find our a sub 1? Well, if we look over here to our sequence, we find that a sub 1 is being multiplied to the next number. Well, what's being multiplied to the next number? That's going to be 5. So our a sub 1 is going to be 5. Next, we have to find our r. Our, our r is being taken to an exponent. Well, what's being taken to an exponent here? This 1 half. So our r is 1 half. So since our r is less than 1, we can find our series by using this guy as I'm circling some stuff right there. So a sub 1 is 5, and that goes over 1 minus 1 half. That gives me 5 over 1 half. And that gives me, after you punch it in your calculator, you just flip and multiply, 10. So the series has a sum of 10. So this right here adds up to 10. Moving on to 6. 6 asks us to write each repeating decimal as a fraction. So this bar over top of the 0.25 means that we are repeating that 0.25. Well, let's write that out a little bit. So we have 0.25 plus, and now when we now we have to skip those two decimal places, so we insert two zeros, two five, and then plus point zero 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 because we are now skipping those four decimal places and putting two five. And this would continue in this pattern, right? Because this guy is point two five, two five, two five, two five, on and on forever. Now I want to write it as a fraction. I am going to use this guy, the sum of an infinite series. First thing I have to do is find my a sub 1. What is my a sub 1? Well, my a sub 1 will be right there. Next, I have to find what my r is. And how do you find your r? Remember, ladies and gentlemen, that you find it going backwards, dividing this by that. So my r is going to be found by going 0 0.0025, dividing that by 0.25. You get from that division 1 over 100. And now after you do that, you have everything to plug into your infinite geometric series. So our a sub 1 is going to be 25 over 100. That is going to be divided by here, 1 minus, and what is our r? 1 over 100. So we keep rocking with this. We have 25 over 100. And then that is now going to be divided by 99 over 100. So you punch this into your calculator, or you flip and multiply to get 25 over 99. And this fraction, ladies and gentlemen, represents the repeating decimal. Now you may look at this and say, oh, I can just put 25 over 99. Not so fast, my friend. We have to uh, look at number 7 real quick. Well, how do we represent number 7? We can represent this as 0.1, yes, because that 1 is not being repeated. It's only the 2 and the 5 that are being repeated. So then we have 0.0. 2, 5, right? And then it's plus 0 .000, 000 because we have to fill up those. 2, 5, and we keep going in this pattern. Now what's the first thing we have to do? Well, we have to figure out our a sub 1. Our a sub 1 is just 0 0.1. Well, that's easy enough. Now, what is our r? Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have to take our r from the repeating part from the repeating part. So this and this would be known as the repeating part. So that r is found by going, r is found by going 0 0.00025 and dividing 0 0.025 to get 1 over 100. 
Now we have our R, we have our A sub 1, we can go ahead and use this infinite geometric series. We use A sub 1, which is uh, 25 or 0 0.025, and we divide that by 1 minus 1 over 100. That will give us 25 over 990. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is only this is only half of it because it's only the repeating part, yes? What did we have in the very first place? We had that point 0.1. So I take this and I add point 0.1. So it's point 0.1 plus 25 over 990 to finally get our repeating decimal of 62 over 495. And here is our fraction. This is our repeating decimal. This is our fraction. And ladies and gentlemen, that does it for section 10.4, Infinite Geometric Series. Good day.